What's up YouTube, Cunningham Trap Pickles back with another video. This video we're going to show you how we ship fish. We have a video on our channel. It's been out there probably four years, five years maybe by now. Um, about us packing up a box of fish, some fry that we shipped out. But this time we're going to ship out some big boys. We got three shipments going out. One to Phoenix, one to Cleveland, and one to Fort Lauderdale. So we're going to pack up the one for Fort Lauderdale. We're going to show you how we bag the fish what bags we use and talk about why we use those bags what chemicals we use why we use those chemicals and give you just a refresh on on how we do things over here at Cunningham Tropicals so come along and let's pack some orders so we're back we got our our stack of boxes here and we also have a little packing table you can see here. We're gonna open up our box here and we're gonna see what we got in here. We reuse the shipping boxes that we get in from our wholesalers. So sometimes there's a heat pack or there's packing paper left, which if the packing paper's in there, like in this case, there's still packing paper in there. So we'll just reuse and leave the packing paper that's in the box. Instead of going to get our own, we have packing paper in the back that we will put in the box as well. But uh, we'll reuse the packing paper. Well, it's not wet. If anything comes in and it's wet, uh, you know, the, some bags have leaked and the boxes are wet or the, the shipping paper's wet, we will discard the shipping paper and put our own, put new fresh, you know, shipping paper in the box. But uh, right now we're going to go ahead and what we do is we line all our boxes that we can with our full box bags we get our all our bags come from uh, I'll put a link in the description of this video all our bags come from clearbags.com we use all square bottom bags for shipping just that's what we've used for years and that's what we like so um, what I also like about clear bags is you can order bags by the hundred so I don't need to buy a case of a thousand bags all the time Although I should, as much as I'm going through them, but uh, you know, I don't need to, to order a piece of a thousand. I can order them by the hundred as I'm needed. And actually, I do need to go order some more quarter box and six box bags from Clear Bags. All right, now we're gonna we got our invoices here, and everything uh, set up here that we're gonna we're gonna get our labels ready to uh, put on our bags of our fish that we are shipping out. So we use Dinmo uh, Label Maker. We use their program. So we're gonna print some labels so we can use on the bags and I'll show you those here in a minute. So here we got our labels made. You can see we're shipping out Aristochromus Christi I mail. We got three of those going out tonight via Southwest Cargo. So we made our labels for those. We also have some, a couple of Bucachromus Rotosai mails going out. Those are the labels for those, and Spectabilis mail. And then we have a mail, Malawi Gar, and some female Malawi Gars going out. So these labels help identify the fish when they get, get to where they're going to the recipient that they know what fish they're pulling on the bag. Because sometimes you can't tell because of the chemicals we use in the bags. And we're gonna get ready to discuss that. So here's a little packing station we use. And we also use this for our chemicals. So here's the chemicals we use. Um, the first thing we use here is cordon fish protector. We use this to help the fish keep the slime coat when they're being stressed and being shipped in the bag. We also use cordon Amquil, which is a great uh, ammonia reducer. And a lot of people use the poly fiber, the polyfill pads. And then we also use cordon methylene blue. Now the only fish we ship without methylene blue is our pleco. And if we're shipping some big fish, we just started getting into using this. It's a uh, tranquil. It's a fish calmer. So we're going to use it on the Malawi hawks that we're shipping out tonight. We're going to use a couple drops of uh, tranquil in the bag just to uh, calm them down a little bit. So let's go grab the fish now that we got the labels and everything ready to go. All right, so now we're gonna go pull a Malawi hawk out of the snake here. The 
important before we ship fish, we go through a process of starving them for a couple days. It's very important that you do a clean out, so we do bask our fish a couple days before they're, uh, they're packed up just to make sure there's no excrement in the bags or cut down on it because that really helps reduce the ammonia that the fish are going to live in for tonight and part of tomorrow until they get to their destination and you know, so the customer goes and picks their package up at the airport, whether it be in Fort Lauderdale, Phoenix, or um, Cleveland tomorrow for that matter, for our customers. So we want to make sure the fish are as healthy as possible before we ship them, so it's important to do a clean out. So another thing, if you order fish off our website and you pick UPS shipping overnight, we don't just put the fish in the bag and send it to your door the next day. I know some customers lately have expected that and they were frustrated when they didn't get that level of service. For that I apologize, but when you order fish on our site, please read our shipping and ordering policy page that we have laid out. It talks about the shipping method we use for livestock because we only ship livestock via UPS overnight or Southwest Cargo. So that's important to understand. We do not ship fish to the post office. Yes, that option is available on our website. It's available because of the dry goods that we offer. So it's important that you read our shipping and ordering policy page to understand. It also goes through our DOA policy. We also, whenever you order, put a card in like this here. It goes through how to acclimate your fish and also, again, explains our DOA policies. Here you can see the, the hawk here that we uh, pulled out of that tank. Nice uh, male here, so we're gonna get him in a bag and get him ready to go to Florida. So here we have the fish here in its bag. We're gonna go ahead and add our, uh, we're gonna put him in this box here for now. And it's important that we, uh, we're gonna add our chemicals and we wanna leave the box open for a second because since we're using, then we're gonna leave it open while we're catching the other fish for now. Since we're using Tranquil, to uh, tranquilize the fish or calm them down. Um, we don't want to come back and see them in the bag like this. Because then that means we use a little bit too much tranquil, which it doesn't kill the fish, but we'll have to put them in fresh water to, to wake them back up. So we want to make sure that uh, we didn't overdo it. So we're going to go ahead and put a couple drops in there to calm them down. And we're going to grab the other fish while he's sitting in here chilling out. And here we're going to do a couple of drops of tranquil. Just a couple drops is all you need. So there's drop one, drop two, drop three, and four. So we have four drops of tranquil that we dropped into this quarter bag for this uh, male Malawi hawk here that we're gonna, and you can see he's got already got the methylene blue in the bag. So we're gonna see how he does a little bit and we're gonna grab the other fish. The other fish that was ordered is the Mucromus uh, rosei, which we have down here in these tanks here. We're going to pull a male out of here and get him ready to go to Fort Lauderdale. There we go. Some of these fish we find, if we can get them to go to the corner, we can. Uh, Calm them down so I'm kind of trapped them. We got a unsexed or female in there as well, but we'll put her back in and we'll get the male here in the bag and we'll get him ready to ready to go. Feisty little bugger already. So we'll probably put a little uh, trank wall on him as well just to calm him down a little bit. So also when you're packing fish, Water is important. Obviously, the fish need to stay wet, but when you're packing them, they don't need to be 90% water, 10% air. So we're gonna get him bagged and tagged and ready to go. It's a nice male uh, Bucromus rotisai off to Fort Lauderdale. So here we're gonna do the same for this bag. We're gonna put in our our Fort uh, fish protector, just a couple of squirts. There's plenty. And put a couple of drops of our methylene blue. And we're going to put some cordon amquil. 
then we're going to put a couple drops of tranquil. Now the, the hawk's still doing okay, so we're going to go ahead and bag the hawk up. And, uh, and then we're going to check out the buco and make sure he doesn't go, because uh, we use too much uh, tranquil on him. So we're going to let the buco calm down for a minute while we pack up the hawk. Now all our bags are double bagged. Um, bigger fish like this, we will triple bag this guy just to make sure there's no issues with leaky bags or um, holes in the bag because we obviously don't want this guy to lose water on the way to to Florida. So we're going to go ahead and put some oxygen in his bag and get him tied up and ready to go. There's some oxygen in there. We don't have any leaks that we can see. So we're gonna tie it up. We use uh, these blue rubber bands off Amazon, nice thick rubber bands. Not a big long elasticity, but they are great to, uh, they do a great job of holding the bags. And then up here, we uh, use this little area here to stage, just to hold the bags so we can tie them up here. Normally we have big orders to catch, we start staging bags up here, which I will do in a little bit because I do have a lot more fish to pack tonight, but I just wanted to show you guys a small order how we pack it out. So this is tight enough. We're going to go ahead and, like I said, double, and then we are going to triple bag this guy here. So that way there's hopefully no issues, no bag leaking, and, and he makes it just fine to a Florida Lauderdale. Now it is going to be some warmer weather these next couple days, but again, it's winter time, so we will be using heat packs in all our boxes. We use Uniheat 72 hour heat packs. We order them from the Florida co-op store down in, uh, in Florida there, for the Florida Fish Farmers Co-op store. So we order, we actually just got a case, new case of Uniheat 72 hour heat packs in um, yeah, last Friday. So. Actually, we're down to a handful, so really glad they're in stock and we're able to get them because we're going to be in trouble if we didn't have any heat packs. We can't ship out fish in the winter without heat packs. So, get the salt tied up. This is the third bag we just put around them. Make sure it's nice and tight. He is all set to go. We're going to put our label on there that we made for him. So, it goes to the when the customer opens their bag, opens a box, they see that they got a male Aristogromus Christi eye, which is what they ordered, but we'll put him in the box. And then the male Buco seems to be doing okay. He hasn't went upside down or gasping for, for air, so we're going to tie him up as well. And him, well, him will double bag. We shouldn't only the bigger ones with triple bag, he should be okay double bag. Put some oxygen in. Again, and again, I, like I said, water-wise, like you can see there's not, his fins are covered, yes, the fish is covered in the bag. There's water, but there's not overkill water because weight's also money and freight. So granted one box you're sending southwest to this customer, you're gonna pay the minimum regardless of how much water I put in it. But when you start getting in the orders like we bring in 20, 30 boxes at a time, water is weight and weight is money when it comes to the freight companies or even you know cargo companies. So you know just enough to keep them surviving. You want them to get there alive, obviously, but we don't need 30 pounds of water for three fish. And this fish, like I said, we'll double bag them. Another quarter bag. And again, we'll put links in the description to all the products we use. Where we get our bags from, the fish protector we use, the amp wheel, tranquil, all that stuff. We'll put links in the description for this video. And this guy will get a label as well that we will uh, put on the bag here. Side mail. 
back here that we have going out. So we'll put him in the box here. So now we have another box bag here. So what we're going to do is we're going to get ready to, to close this box up. Got to get our handy dandy heat packs out. We'll get these opened and get them taped here to the lid. Um, so it can go in that box and get sealed here. So we can have one of the at least one of the four boxes we're shipping out tonight will be uh, will be packed and then we're going to go pack the other three up so we can get to the airport. Southwest Cargo in Detroit here closes at 10 so call up is 945 but I like to get there around 9 at the latest so that way in case there's any issues or whatnot we have time to sort it out but usually there's no issues and the guys there are great and gals for uh, customer service there so we're really happy with our um, service we get here in Detroit when we're dropping off or picking up fish. So we're gonna. These do have a sticky back on the on the uh, heat packs, but we're gonna tape them to the lid as well, just to make sure that it doesn't fall in there. So we get the heat pack ready to go. We'll grab the invoice and get the goodie the goodie package around that has the invoice in it for this gentleman. The customer that orders from us, whether you order fish or dry goods. You're gonna get your invoice in a package like this. A little cellophane package, it's gonna have a card, whether it be livestock related or food related, you're gonna get a card in there. You're also gonna get a sticker and a business card. Put those in a bag. Close it all up here. So here you can see we got the box all settled. We ended up laying these guys down. Um, we got the full box bag around. We don't really tie it, but we got it tucked in there. It's all good. These, you have know, three bags. He's got two bags. We're ready to close this bag boy up so we can get it ready to go. Tuck the other shipping paper around. Best we can. Doesn't have to be perfect to get in there, but uh, we're gonna put uh, this down here, the lid. We're gonna write a little note to our customer, thanking them from the bit for our business. So this guy is Michael. So. Michael, thanks for the business. Enjoy your uh, enjoy your new fishes. So we're gonna put that on the lid the best we can. Right now, styrofoam doesn't work too well. Best we can, and then we're going to uh, get this bad boy sealed up here. We got the invoice. We're gonna put the invoice in here. So that way, when he opens the box, he sees the note. He sees the invoice that we have for his shipment this all ready to go. Get this guy, get these fishies packed and ready for Florida. All right, so we got those guys packed up. Another thing we do is we have a label we put on all our cargo boxes here, you know. Thanking, thanking, you know, customers obviously for the business, but also for the the cargo uh, personnel. So we'll put on here the recipient's name of the fish and the airport that it's going to. So that way when we get up to Detroit, they can sort them out by Fort Lauderdale versus Cleveland versus Phoenix because so a lot of times we go there, we have multiple boxes that need to go out and we feel this helps the, the cargo agents get the, the boxes to the right place. Real quick, I'll talk about shipping rates. We do not control the rates. So a lot of times I get yelled at, customers get frustrated, you know, your shipping rates are too high. And I apologize for that, but that's not my rates. So when you order off our website, and you go to get the shipping rates, when you go to that part, the shipping rates pull directly from UPS based on my account. So the rate is what the rate is. You pay what I pay. Taylor, they should have a page there that explains their policy. Um, if Square had a way where I could lock you out and I might have found a way, I gotta do some digging into it, but if I could lock you out of, if you buy livestock, you can only pick UPS or Southwest Cargo. And if you buy dry goods, you can only check out, you can only pick USPS for shipping. If there's a way I could divert that, I would. However, customers that buy both, that might be a problem. I don't know, I, I have to do some testing. I might have a way to figure that out. But we don't hide shipping costs. You pay what we pay. So please don't. You know, look at online retailers as we're, we're hiding costs or we're trying to rip you off. UPS is, the rate is what the rate is. The rate's based on my volume. 
So I guess I don't, you guys need to buy some more fish so I can ship some more volume so that way I can uh, get a better rate with them. So, but with that, we're gonna end the video. We got a lot of more packing, a lot more packing to do tonight to get our fish to the airport in time so that our customers will be happy tomorrow. If you haven't yet, please like, share, subscribe to our channel. Hit the notification bell so you get all the, the notifications as when we upload videos, when we go live and do our walkthroughs. Hope you guys enjoy our channel. We're going to be doing a lot more videos this year. Just different things around the fish room, trips we're going to. Not going to, not going to give anything away. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And if you have subscribed, thanks for the support. We appreciate you coming back and keep watching.